Hi vlog. Today we're mounting our solar panels. The tools we're going to use to put rib nuts in the solar panels. I've got an Astro 1442 rivet nut setter or rib nut setter, whatever you want to call it. Here are the rib nuts we're using. They're 1 4 inch by 20. I have this 9 millimeter uh, drill bit. Got it on Amazon. Well, I got most of the stuff on Amazon. And then we have some 5952 very high bondage 3M tape. This is actually what we're going to use to adhere the solar panels to, well, the angle iron to the roof of the van. So basically, what it's going to be is there's two pieces of angle iron, which it's actually aluminum. I don't know why I'm saying that. They're going to be on the van like this, and then the solar panels are going to be connected across. So I just want to show you guys real quick the way I'm doing this. Right here, there's a little hole. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this square and I'm gonna center it as best as I can to that hole. And then I'm gonna take a lead pencil I just bought, a mechanical pencil, and I'm just gonna draw a line here. And the reason I'm using a lead pencil is so the silver will show up on these matte black frames. And I'm just gonna do that and mark, there's another hole over here on this side. So I'm gonna do that and mark it on uh, the short sides of each panel and then go through and drill holes through them. There's another piece of metal, so I'm not sure I'll be able to install the rib nut here. I'm gonna just drill through and I'm gonna test it and try to put one rib nut in. And hopefully, we don't have any issues. It seems like it actually worked. Wow. As you can see, the bolt went in. And I'm like kind of pulling it a little bit. It's not moving at all. Tightened it down all the way. It's not freely spinning. So basically, I have these pieces of leftover birch plywood so I've, and some uh, one, by, one by two furring strips to elevate the solar panel off the ground to kind of simulate how high I want the solar panel lifted. And then if you look, there are these hanger bolts screwed in. So I screwed them in all the way. You get the idea. So then I lined everything up how I wanted it, tried to make sure this angle was lined up with that angle, which it's not anymore, but you get the idea. So basically what I just, I just, I just pushed this aluminum angle into the bolt and held it down because you see there's a little bit of a wobble here. I held it down flat, pushed it in, and then what it did is it made this little scratch, if I can get it to focus. Yeah, this little scratch here. And then I made a little mark, and then I did that up here as well. And then I flipped it back, and then I line it back up with the mark and see if it needs adjusted or not. And then if it does, then I would wipe the, the marker away before it dried, and then if it needed to be lower, I just put it as lower and you know, just repeat trial and error until now I've got the holes basically, I mean the uh, spots lined up where I need them. And so now I'm ready to actually drill the holes and then just do a little test fit. I didn't record but I, I test fit the solar panel on the roof yesterday and if you follow us on Instagram then you probably saw I am extremely annoyed right now because the solar panel is not lifted enough. So it's tipping on this. I decided to just drill new holes higher up and I'm about to test fit that. So you're gonna see this test fit. There we go. All right guys, so that is a success. It is clearing the ribs and when I push on it, there's no wobble. So. Doesn't even move. So now I'm just trying to figure out how exactly I want to lay out the rest of the panels. I distanced the solar panels as far from the roof fan as I could to reduce the shadow that would be casted onto the panels when the sun is rising or setting. I didn't show you guys this before, but 
once I had all the panels lined up on the roof, I basically just made a mark. And well, you can't see it over there, but I made a mark over there as well. And I put a number up for the panel. So this is panel number two from the front. And then I did the same thing for the third panel, which obviously it's not gonna fit on there. I'm gonna, I have another piece of uh, angle aluminum I'm gonna cut and mix in that with, so. I need to get everything ready to cut our aluminum angle. Just realized I didn't run the drop cable from our window, so I'm gonna have to run upstairs and do that. You may not catch it, but I switched to an angle grinder with a cutting disc here. The jigsaw was cutting through the aluminum very slow and rough. I just wanted to take a moment during this time lapse to say thank you guys so much for following along with our build. We recently hit a thousand Instagram followers and I believe with this video we'll probably surpass 200 YouTube subscribers. That is just incredible. And your support means the world to us. If you get any value from our content, please consider subscribing to our channel. So guys, I'm going to get up on the van and wash the roof of the van where the um, rack's going to sit. Not really going to record this part. just because I'm just using some car wash and um, a little scrub brush and a towel. And then after that, I'm actually gonna hit it with some rubbing alcohol and I'm gonna hit the uh, bottom of this angle iron with rubbing alcohol because that's what 3M's instruction says to do with anodized aluminum. Here is our VHB tape. This is the 5952 it's by 3M. Um, what they recommend is four square inches per pound that you're trying to hold up. Uh, I believe our solar panels are about 20 pounds each, so they're about 80 pounds total. And we have, I'm doing the math right now, that gives us about 198 extra inches of bonded area than what's recommended. So I think we're going to be fine as far as, you know, them flying off or anything. I don't think that's going to happen. What I'm doing really quick is there's a couple of air bubbles in here, so I'm just gonna use my pocket knife to cut them. And that way, there's not a distance where the tape's not actually sticking to those products. Basically, the way I'm gonna do this is you can see I've got these three furring strips up here, and I'm gonna put the angle iron on top of that on both sides. So it's basically gonna be holding it up off the van roof, and then I'm gonna put in the two solar panels to kind of hold the angle iron at the right width uh, distance from each other. And then since the furring strip is lifting it, I'll be able to start peeling the film off the tape and then move the furring strip back to push it down in place. The rack is officially mounted. Honestly, this stuff is so strong, I can't even move it. So now we're going to install the entry gland. And these are the waterproofing pieces that we run the cable through. I'm going to use my favorite 3M Fast Cure 5200 to adhere this to the ceiling and to waterproof it. And these are our cables we're going to use. We're just going to splice whichever end we don't need. And that should give us plenty of extra. If I remember, these are like 20 feet long. I have looked at the top of my, the top of my roof, and I'm now looking at the bottom of the ceiling. And I'm going to drill a hole right around here to mark where I want the center of the entry gland to be. And then I'm going to go up on the top, and I'm going to drill uh, bigger holes in the corners. And then I'm going to use a jigsaw and cut out a little square. And then I'm going to prime the edge, paint it. Now I'm just working on cleaning up the cables and getting them wired in the most efficient way. Probably overdoing this a little bit, guys, but just trying to make sure you get good coverage. Don't want to have any leaks. Like I said, I'm putting a little bead on the edge of this as well because I just, I think it would make it softer on the cable and I don't want to ever chafe that cable so all right guys that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching if you got any value from this video please hit that subscribe button give this video a like 
and tune in for next week's video. We'll see you then.